In this episode, we talk transmission problems on Project Load Fairmont and a new relationship. Welcome to the channel. My name is Grant Tommy, helping you build your hot rod and your confidence without a ton of money. And I, we're going to spend more time today talking about building your confidence. I mean, there's sometimes with the whole purpose of my channel is to help the viewer understand um, like if I can do it so can you I really don't have much skills built up over my first 35 years of life when it comes to mechanics and you know, this project project the Fairmont has been basically um, the exploration of that from age 33 on uh, of course there was the rat rod radio flyer previously and in you know, my old Jeep I mean there's sure I've done some reaching in my day but Every now and then you get days like today for me where um, the work week was busy and you know you kind of know what the next step is, what you want to do, but you're not really sure how to do it and so sometimes uh, that gets the best of you in today's episode. It's going to be a little bit of a miscellaneous step. If you recall from the video of when I finally got this to drive, and I'll leave that info card up over here, um, for whatever reason we lost drive. I mean, it would only shift from first to second and it would never shift out of second. And so a lot of people have been recommending that would be the shift control modulator on the back of the C4 transmission. So yeah, I've done a little bit of research on that and it sounds like that's a possibility, but I don't know that that's going to necessarily fix it. I don't know if that's actually the problem. And so this is what I talk about when, um, I'm sure there's gonna be a better way to diagnose this than what I'm gonna do today. I did go ahead and order that part because it's only like a $24 part from O'Reilly's, um, but it's one of those parts too where placed the order online yesterday and here we are on Sunday and um, it wasn't going to be available to pick up until 4.30. That's usually when I pick up out here in the garage on Sundays when I film these episodes. So I don't have that part in hand, but what I think we're going to do, knowing that it is a vacuum actuated piece, well, we're going to try something out. The C4 and C6 transmissions have a vacuum modulator valve which resides on the back side, passenger side of the transmission, really close to the tail housing um, assembly. So the vacuum line goes in there, and so what we're gonna do today is, we're gonna try two things. Um, well, first off, in a previous episode, I kind of tried running down the vacuum line from you know the whole way, and it, it seemed like there's no vacuum leaks, but to confirm that, we're going to uh, hook up my vacuum gauge to that and just at least see at idle, make sure we're just not at zero. So then we know, at least upstream, we would have you know a solid connection. The second thing we're going to try to do is when we're really down deep in there, um, just really be super critical of all of the, the vacuum hoses, uh, see if there's any cracks in the lines and things like that. So anyway, let's, uh, let's tear into it a little bit. First things first, we remove the rubber hose from the existing modulator valve itself. Having pulled the vacuum line off the modulator itself, the final, I guess this is the final piece, goes into a hard line from the modulator. Um, no signs of cracks, so this little chunk of rubber hose seems to be in good, good condition. But from here, we're going to hook up the uh, the vacuum line or my vacuum gauge to the hard line and uh, just see if see what kind of results we get there. Before we go and fire the car up, there is one thing I did want to say. While it does run a lot better now with the Holly on board than it ever did with the Motorcraft, I still think it's running a little bit rich. So in future episodes, um, I think I'm going to order a air fuel mixture gauge since we do have O2 sensor uh, bungs on the stock EFI H pipe. Um, so just as well, it'll help me tune it. And I haven't set total timing yet. We've set initial timing. Um, but I, I suspect it's still getting a little too much fuel, especially at startup. In fact, I think I'm gonna order a manual choke because I just, it doesn't wanna run just like right out of the gate because I think it's getting way too much fuel and that choke flap isn't opening up far enough. Um, so we're gonna get the car running and we're gonna slap the vacuum gauge on that transmission line and go from there.
Well, it's pulling some vacuum, but that was running really rough, so I almost wonder if... Um, I'm gonna hook it back up to the modulator now and see if it idles smoother than that. Um, um, anyway, we're gonna see if we can't get it to idle better um, because I did pull the tranny dipstick to check the fluid level. It did say you wanna do that when it's warm, so I want it to run just a little bit longer um, so I can recheck the tranny fluid um, dipstick which was beyond full, so need to, need to check that accurately. Yeah, this is it running with the vacuum line plugged back into the actuator. It sounds so much better. Okay, well, naked garage bay. Um, pull. Pulled Project Low Fairmont out, uh, checking the fluid after it had been idling for a bit. Bone dry, so that just might be my issue. Might just be super low on transmission fluid. And I've known for a while, you just how many times I've been under there. At some point, I think it's probably, I'm thinking it's post oil pan gasket installation because of where I jacked the, the motor up uh, was right on the bell housing after I removed the motor from the engine mounts, you know, to get it up, to get the old oil pan out. I'm guessing it had something to do with probably that point in time. Um, probably put some strain on something, open something up a little more, you know, just enough pressure, put something a little out of square and, um, you know, keep in mind, probably 40 year old gaskets anyway on the car. But we're gonna, uh, when we go to O'Reilly's today, we're gonna get, grab some transmission fluid and we're gonna start there because um, it, it drove and shifted just fine prior to the head swap fiasco. So um, anyway, we'll do that. But as long as we're talking about the transmission leak, well then I guess now is as good a time to talk about a new partnership. So this drip pan has lived underneath the car for, I don't know how long. It, it lived underneath my uh, diesel Jeep Liberty because it had a slight oil leak in it too. Um, so I've got a lot of mileage out of this drip pan. But you can see all of this amber fluid, of course, would be or red is transmission fluid. So again, we we have a leak. Um, but since we have the car pulled out right now, now's as good a time to uh, clean this side up before we pull it back in. And um, when we clean it up, I want to talk about a new product. I say new product, but I mean new product to me. And that's because Super Clean has stepped up and donated. Um, about five different cleaning supplies to me to try out to feature in videos. And uh, this was just a perfect timing for this relationship. Like I said, we're, we're in the home stretch with Project Low Fairmont. So um, we've got transmission spills to fill up with the floor absorbent. So this is gonna be the first product we use um, and see how well it works. And so keep in mind, there's probably gonna be a series of me featuring their product in upcoming episodes. Uh, but I just wanted to say a huge thanks to Super Clean for reaching out uh, and hooking me up with all sorts of stuff. We've got a, another round of degreasing to go on under the under the hood of Project Glow Fairmont. Um, and so I'm, I'm excited to use the product because they, they kind of gave me, I'm, really I think there's three different degreasers. Um, one's like in an aerosol can, We've got some wheel, wheel and tire cleaner. So I'm excited to, uh, I'm excited to get to that point where it's time to just clean up Project Low Fairmont, get it ready for car show season. Um, man, I just thought that they would never come. But anyway, let's see how the old uh, floor absorbent works for against oil spills here underneath Project Low Fairmont. Still a little bit oily residue and I don't know, maybe that's not the fairest shake for super clean. You know, these weren't brand new oil spills. These are like month old, <laughs> months old oil spills. So, um, you know, we were down to residue as it was. Um, but I will say that, you know, wherever there was a new new spill, newer spill, uh, took it right up. So um, I will say I was kind of surprised how fine the grit was, uh, you know, they always joke kitty litter is what this stuff is. So I was expecting something a little more coarse, almost like um, salt that I use for treating sidewalks, you know. But anyway, I think uh, 
I think it's a pretty good product. It's gonna definitely save me some time, a little less scrubbing. Uh, I will say also, where the steel was and we had just some surface rust, it helped pick some of that up. I was really impressed with that. But um, anyway, this is the first of more to come, kind of highlighting or testing out super clean products. So once again, thanks to them for sending that packet real quick. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, I have a picture set up of, you know, what all that is. So in time, we will get to what we're talking about here. Um, yeah, I guess I should probably pick up my mess first before I <laughs> really highlight the company who was nice enough to send me free stuff. But anyway, while we put things back together, which we're almost there, um, it's now past 4.30 and I have not got that second email that O'Reilly's always tells you, you know, hey, we got your order, but wait for the next email to know that you can come in to pick up your stuff. So I haven't got that. I'm not gonna wait around all day for that to roll in. I'm just gonna hang out here, uh, hope that it shows up and then be able to accomplish all of this in this episode. So I'm really hopeful that it's just the transmission fluid issue, but um, we've got that vacuum control modulator uh, if if need be. The, the reality of the situation is I'm probably going to buy like house brand ATF uh, since I do have a leak and I, that's always been on the list of things to do is take it somewhere to get the transmission service. Um, that's just something that's out of my comfort zone. Um, I really don't want to drop the pan, change the fluids, do all that stuff. Um, I don't know. I've, I've heard horror stories. Maybe I'm making a mountain out of a molehill, I don't know, but uh, that was always on the list of things. Like when I go get an alignment, uh, I was to get the transmission serviced. So anyway, that's, that's that. And oh, again, special thanks to Super Clean for hooking me up with this, uh, this gear package and all that stuff. But uh, just like they gave me some swag, if you guys want some of my swag, well, go down to the description below Head over to my Spreadshirt store and get you a straight six fan. Pistons, T or hoodie, like this. Uh, I had switched out hoodies earlier in the episode, you may have noticed, uh, because I had already got tranny fluid all over that other one and didn't want to do that on this one. So anyway, go pick you up some swag. But there's also the reminder that um, if you're watching this the day it uploads, which is Wednesday, that means tomorrow is Car Guy and Six Fan Show. And that is a joint operation between my channel as well as Jason Cars over at Old Car Guy info card up over here so make sure you're subscribed to his channel so you don't miss an episode as we bounce back and forth from channel to channel leave some videos over here for you to continue to watch and support my channel otherwise like comment share subscribe don't care which one you do that's gonna do it for this episode until next time peace out